one of the first things that you need to do with an RTD is to check the insulation resistance, and that should be done before you do anything else with it. You pull it out of the process, or if you don't even have to pull it out of the process, but usually to get a good, accurate measure of the insulation resistance, you need to get it away from wherever it's mounted so that we don't have any stray voltage or anything screwing up your measurement. And why this is important is that with a platinum resistance thermometer, and we show a little cutaway view here, and you can see the coils of platinum wire. And if any moisture or contaminants are present inside this device, you're going to get shunting between those coils. Electricity is going to take that path of least resistance, and sometimes moisture is going to be the path that it will take rather than making its way through that platinum wire. And you're going to end up with a low resistance measurement and a correspondingly low temperature reading. So that's, that's just the most important measurement that you're going to make on an RTD when you're trying to calibrate it or verify its performance. Uh, kind of the minimum test that you'd want to do would be 50 volts DC, and it should be greater than 100 mega ohms at room temperature. A lot of the manufacturers you'll see will have 500 volts, 500 mega ohms, or 1,000 mega ohms. Um, you know, and, and those are uh, tests that are done just to kind of expand the, the confidence in that sensor performing properly at higher temperatures. Because as we go up in temperature with the probe, the insulating materials uh, properties decrease and the insulation resistance decreases. So if you start out with a sensor at room temperature, it might be 500 mega ohms. Uh, but by the time you get it up to its maybe four or 500 degrees C, that might be down in the 20 mega ohm range. We, we really, it isn't necessary to have that huge insulation resistance at room temperature for the probe to perform correctly, but they're manufactured with that higher rating so that they do work correctly at the higher temperatures. And for those of you that want to put some math to this, this is a little equation you can use. And in our example here, um, if we have an insulation resistance that gets down to one or 0.1 mega ohms, that equates to a temperature reading that will be 0.26 degrees C lower than it should be. You know, it's, so for for some processes. That, that could be very significant, and in fact, that could eat up your whole tolerance budget for that measurement point. So again, that's a, that's a real important measurement to make.